And now we're coming to the last two churches. And in these last two churches, I clearly see, and I hope you will see it, the saints prior to the tribulation that will be raptured prior to the tribulation in the church of Philadelphia. And in the church of Laodicea, those that will go into the tribulation will see these two clearly, and I hope you can see it, and I hope you have an ear to hear, as he's been saying, these things. So at the Church of Philadelphia, which I'm going to refer to as the pre-tribulation rapture church, and to the angel of the Church in Philadelphia write, and to the messenger of the Church in Philadelphia write, he who is holy... He who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this. He from the vision has the key, and here's the key of David. And he's saying he has a key that can open something, and if it, he opens it, it's opened. And if he shuts it, if it's shut to you, it is shut. In the parable of the virgins, the ones who were to come in with the groom, the groom's friends who would come in with him to wait for the bride to be prepared, once they were called in, the door would be shut and they would wait there with the groom as the bride prepared herself until the father would say, it's time for the wedding. We're going to talk a lot more, and I'm going to have a message someday on the ten virgins. But for now, I want you to understand that he will open the door. We will have access to go in with him to the wedding feast, which is pre before the marriage supper of the Lamb, to wait with the groom as the bride prepares herself and until the father says it's time for the wedding. We're going to have to get a lot deeper into that, but this is the church and the message to Philadelphia. This is the message that he will open a door for the pre-tribulation saints who are waiting, watching, not drunk, not loving the things of the world. Their lights are lit. They're waiting for him. He's not going to catch them like a thief in the night. They're going to be ready with their lights lit and oil in their lamps. He will have a door open to heaven for them. And the ones that are left out, no one opens, says this. I know your deeds. Behold, this church prior to the tribulation, behold, I have put before you an open door. There's a door there for the ones who can overcome this world, for the overcomers that overcome this sin, this flesh, this love of the world. The world's a great harlot out there right now, just calling you, putting her skirt up, come to me in every direction. Just the beauty of the world, just calling you away from your Lord, your God, your jealous God. But for those that are waiting, those that are watching, he is going to have an open door. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut. Because why? Because you have a little power. These last days, we're not going to be going in glory. It ain't going to be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's not going to become the coming of Elijah until after those pre-tribulation saints are raptured. And he says, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Just a little power, just a little walking, just keeping there, hanging on, the ones that are waiting, watching. 
Behold, I will cause those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them to come and bow down at your feet and to know that I have loved you. This worldly, religious, satanic, led religion, once you're gone, once you're raptured before the tribulation, those people are going to know that God had a purpose. And the things that you did and you said and you waited for and you watched for, they were for a reason. And they're going to know that God took you. And once God takes those pre-tribulation saints, after that will come the coming of Elijah, the outpouring of his spirit. Because once those few, those few, those overcomers, that remnant are taken before the tribulation starts, there's going to be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon those that saw them go, that know the end's coming. And there will be some time between the time that those are taken before the tribulation starts. And in that period, there will be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, getting the church ready, getting the saints ready for what's coming and knowing that God is on the move. And in verse 10, he says, because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from that hour of testing, that hour of testing. God's purpose in the tribulation is, yes, to put an end to the Antichrist, the beast, to put an end to this ungodly world, but he has to discipline the church. He has to prepare the church. He has to prepare the bride. The bride has to get dressed as he is with his friends at his father's house, pre waiting for the bride to be prepared. The bride has to be prepared, will be prepared before the tribulation in that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but certainly through the tribulation. God's purpose in the tribulation, first and foremost, is to prepare the saints, to prepare the church, to have the church put on her white garments, to have the church and the church and the bride prepared and ready and waiting and watching and cleansed, walking in white. That's God's first purpose in the tribulation. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing. That hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test, to test them, he says, those who dwell upon the face of the earth. He's going to get the church ready, but he's also going to get the last of those saints out of the world. That's the purpose of the tribulation, to get the saints ready and to get the last of the people saved. That is what he's trying to do first and foremost. God isn't just here going to destroy the earth and the last of mankind for no reason. In fact, life and earth will go on for at least a thousand years after the tribulation, and the beginning of his coming of his kingdom, which we will rule and reign with him. But he says that he will keep us from that hour. He will keep us from that testing because he's coming upon to bring the world, to test them, to get them ready. And he says he will keep us from that hour of testing. Those that are waiting, watching, prepared, not drunk, not loving the world, your lights are lit. You're waiting. You're watching. He says, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have. We have just a little power. We're slaves in Babylon. We're here in this world, and we can't get out of the overwhelmingness of it, and we have just a little power. And he says, hang on, hold fast to what you have, in order that no one can take your crown, that no one can take this victory. Don't let someone take this victory of you getting raptured before the tribulation. Hold on to the little power that you have. And again, the resurrection life continues as he says, he who overcomes 
To the overcomers, he said, I will make him a pillar in the temple of God. Those that are ready and watching, when you're doing it out of love for him, not because the world's coming to an end, not because the tribulation started, but you're waiting and watching for him, he'll make you a pillar in the temple of his God. And he will, and you will not go out from it anymore. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the holy of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. He will write the name of his God upon you and the name of the new city upon you, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. You'll have his new name, that new name that he's giving us. You'll have the name of his father. You'll have the name of his city. These overcomers, these that are waiting, these that are raptured before the tribulation who are waiting and watching, there's a great reward for us. We become a pillar in the temple of God and we wait and we watch for these things and he will give us the overcomers. He will give the overcomers these things. And he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you understand what I'm saying, saints? Those of you are waiting and watching, you're not doing it for nothing, and the other ones are just all going to be treated the same, and we're all going to sit on a cloud and play a harp. There's position, places in the kingdom of God. You'll rule and reign with him. You'll be given special things in this life, special anointings, special food from heaven. The power and the glory of God will be with you. And as we wait upon him and we're caught up with him before the wedding, we'll be his friends that are taken to his father's house to have the wedding feast, not the marriage supper of the land, but the wedding feast. He has that with his friends at his father's house. And once his friends go in there with him. The door was shut at the Galilean weddings. The door was shut and locked and nobody else could get in. And the others had to wait until the marriage supper of the lamb. As the bride got herself ready, the pre-tribulation saints will be raptured. They'll be caught up into heaven and they will have a wedding feast with him at his father's house. And the door is shut. The others can't get in until the time of the wedding, the marriage supper. And at the marriage supper, we're all together. And that's at the end of the tribulation. Be those pre-tribulation saints that are waiting, watching. We will be caught up with him. We will have that wedding feast with him. And we will be pre waiting while the bride is preparing herself. And as he is doing his work upon the earth to get the last of the saints, that is when and how the gospel will be preached in power and glory, in the coming and the power of Elijah, in that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Once the other saints see that some have been caught up and they're gone, they're going to go and preach the gospel to every nation, to every language in power and glory. As they wait upon the coming of the Lord, and as the tribulation starts, God will get the last of his people out of this earth, and he will get them prepared for his marriage supper where he will have his bride and she will become his wife. 